Yeah, and you are watching the Sunday night show. You are going to meet on every Sunday. And today is the very first episode. So without any further delay, let's get started. <clears throat> today, we have a very special guest with us. She is someone from seven seas away and in the field of ham radio is an inspiration for many viewers. I will surely start the show without any further delay. So let's welcome our special guest, the ARRL lady, Ria Jairam, having the call sign N2RJ. But, but before I start the show, before we will start our conversation, I have something to say. Actually, I have to make an announcement. Last time, I gave the examination and I finally passed it. So my call sign is VU3 OOS, Victory Uniform 3, Oscar Oscar Sierra. Thanks to you for your wishes. It actually worked for me. Well, thank you very much. Um, and you know what? I congratulations on, on getting your license. I remember I got my license and I was very happy and you look like you're smiling a lot. That's good. Yes, yes. I will give my best and more love to the hobby. So anyways, <laughs> let's start. Hi, Antu Ajay. Please tell us something about yourself. So, um, yeah, hi, everybody there in India and worldwide. Um, I am Ria. My call sign is N2RJ. I originally uh, started my amateur radio journey in my birth country, which is Trinidad and Tobago, back in um, the 1990s when I got licensed. I, you know, I got interested in school and then a teacher got me interested in, in amateur radio and really, you know, um, encouraged me to get licensed and encouraged me to get into amateur radio. Then I came to the United States in the year 2000 and then went through all of, um, I got the FCC license in 2001. And then, you know, I've been doing various things in amateur radio. I do um, a lot of... Um, uh, DXing, like I try to work a lot of DX foreign countries. I try also, I do contesting. I work the competitions. I also do some APRS. I do some, you know, different little things. And I, I, I use other types of radios too. I use GMRS radios. I use um, FRS radios. And, you know, um, here in uh, New Jersey and in amateur radio, um, and I also serve the AWRL on their board of directors. I'm one of the directors of the AWRL. So that's how it is. And I'm very proud of you for getting your license. Thank and I want to see more, more YLs and more Indian YLs get their license. Especially. I'm working on that. Trying to inspire hmm? That's pretty commendable. I think we need more persons like Neil, sir, and the teacher who inspired you to inspire us, right. uh, to, inspire us to indulge ourselves into the hobby. Yeah, my teacher, unfortunately, he, he died of cancer back in 2014. But, um, you know, he remains inspiration. And we're here, you know, we always have to help the teachers. I have a local teacher here I'm helping with the school radio club, Mrs. DiCaprio. She, she is doing great things with a school, a middle school radio club. It's really good in yes. the charter school. Your teacher must be very proud of you. Yeah. I hope he is. Maybe, you know. Yes, he's still seeing you and he's very proud of you, the work you're doing. <laughs> let me let me let me tell you something. You know, yes. it was very interesting. He is very radio, but we, he taught me how to listen, okay? Wow. And listen with the radio and listen to all sorts of things. Things and I'll tell you that we should not be listening to. But I will go there. But no, that um listen. One thing I always like about your videos is that you're curious, and that is the big thing. You have to share the knowledge and you have to stay curious. So teachers, you know, I help, I help a lot of teachers. Uh, I help a few teachers. I help one locally here with her classroom and our amateur radio club in the Sussex County Charter School for Technology. It's a middle school with kids, you know, in, um, who are in grades six through um, I believe it's six through eight. And then they're, um, they're learning a lot of science. They talk to the astronauts on the space station and they're building their soldering too, you know, with the soldering iron. And they also 
um, big satellite contacts and HF contacts. And, and the most important thing is they learn to not be afraid of the microphone, you know? That's great. Yeah. So, so I, mm -hmm. yes, you first. No, no, no. I was just saying that that's important that, you know, that they learn to talk and speak up. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. So is there any childhood memory associated with radio or what is the first memory that is associated with radio? You know, yes, as a matter of fact, okay, so my dad, okay, was he listened to the shortwave radio, right? And he had a radio that he used to tune across the bands, and I used to hear all this noise on the bands, right? And then he showed me some of the stations he used to listen to. So everybody knows the BBC, okay, the BBC World Service. Uh, we also listen to Voice of America. And because I am a member of Indian Diaspora, we also listen to All India Radio on shortwave. Okay, we used to get All India Radio on shortwave. Wow, we used to listen cool. to the programming from India. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was very interesting to connect. So it was nice. And we listened to, we listened to all sorts of things on a shortwave, even um, things like, um, you know, when the Russian woodpecker was jamming, because back then we had the Russian woodpecker was... Um, it was a, you know, interference on the band. And, um, but, you know, it, we kind of, um, my uncle, he got into CB radios, right? And we bought CB radios because my mom was a nurse who worked in a hospital and she worked late at night. So she worked a night shift and she had a car and we had to make sure that, you know, she could call for help when her car, if her car break down so um we we did that we got the cb radios and she would call us you know and it, it worked out very well but sometime later on you know we got cell phones and that kind yeah. of and the became less than right <laughs> yeah but still, and my uncle was, surging in. right my uncle my uncle with the cb radios he passed away and now they use cell phones only he has a hardware store for his business so, as I said, inspiration. You truly are an inspiration to him, especially Vyals. So, we would like to know who inspired you to come into the hobby. Not my teacher, you know, <clears throat> my teacher. He was um, he was very instrumental in in getting me into. Um, his name was um, Tony, and it's called Sign Nine Y Four Alpha Lima, and he was very instrumental. In getting a lot of people licensed so you know he was a very huge advocate for amateur radio and you know it's always the teachers you know listen i'll tell you why the teachers are good because the teachers are in front of the classroom all day okay and the students they have to listen okay and if they don't listen you know they will get in trouble yeah. but so the, they will tell them good things and amateur radio is a good thing for teachers to tell students about as I said, we need more persons like Neil sir and Tony sir to indulge, mm -hmm. to inspire ourselves to indulge in the radio, sorry, in the right. hobby. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, teachers are very smart people too. So they, you know, they come with this position of that they know their things, they know you know, everything. and right. Well, they don't know everything, okay. But they know, they know, and they know a lot, and they care about their students. You know, at least good teachers care about their students. My dad was a teacher as well too, okay. and he loved he loved his students. Teach. Yes. So you know, my dad was a teacher. My mom was a nurse, and that's how, you know, they kind of. Well, my dad was was into all of that stuff, but my dad taught history, and stuff. He didn't teach like science or anything. But you know, there's a lot to learn here. Here in the States, actually, I have um, I had a, a really good mentor in the form of um, um, Steve Mandelson, W2ML. He's also silent key. But he was very helpful in getting me connected with a lot of people. So it's always good to have good mentors and friends. But he was a teacher. He was a, a broadcast engineer for one of the local TV stations. It's always good to have mentors. 
the mm-hmm. ones who inspire you so yes. who are your yes who am i no 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 you okay okay sorry what was the question again yes so through your videos from few uh-huh. that record we get to know that now fcc is charging 35 dollars for license so now our viewers would definitely like to know what was fcc's policy before this change and why they suddenly started charging okay so um yeah the 35 dollar fee i mean back in the old days in the really old days the fcc used to charge a license fee i don't know how much it was oh. and then they 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 discontinued that right and then in um they they used to charge for what we call vanity calls right so here you can choose your own call sign right my n2rj is a call sign that i chose right okay. and um the the fcc used to charge $20 for the privilege of own, of choosing your own call sign but eventually they decided well you know what it's not you know it it's too much trouble and it costs too much money to collect the fee strange enough so they they scrapped that what they did was in 2017 i believe it was they passed the congress right which is the the you know the elected representatives in india you have like members of parliament right here in here in um in the united states we have members of congress so congress passed a, a legislation called the ray bounds act right and the ray bounds act included these fees and it was signed into law by trump in um in 2017 i believe it was the awrl got some of the fees removed because they were also going to charge us what they call spectrum fees for use of the spectrum but um we did not get the the license fees the application fees removed so that came and then when the fcc finally came to implement the rule they initially started with a fee of $50 right and this was for all personal licenses okay personal licenses would be things like gmrs and stuff like that so gmrs already had a $70 fee but they were proposing to bring that down to 50 and also add a fee for amateur radio for $50 the awrl went and told them you know that um please consider taking out the fee uh because we do public service we do all of stem teaching and such like that so what happened was the fcc said well we'll reduce it to 35 and that's how we came at 35 the awrl went again it is a good step <clears throat> yeah well i wish that there was no fee but but it can't be helped yeah but you know the other thing is that um we went to the to the fcc again and and ask them if this fee will apply to license um upgrades so if you because we have three levels of license we have well we have three current levels right we have previous levels we have technician general and extra right we also had two additional classes called novice and advanced and those are gone now but people can still hold those old classes their grandfather then if you upgrade from one class to another like if you go from technician to general or general to extra um we asked the fcc not to charge any fee for that and the fcc said yeah they will not charge fee to to change your license class but they will charge only for new license renewal license and also for the vanity call so those are those are things yes that yes, they will charge a the fee for. technician stuff the official stuff yeah Help. right um it m- might be a bit controversial the topic or the question which i will ask you now i don't know whether to ask you or not you can pass so i got to know through your youtube community before few days you had an issue surrounding uh, the minimum credit with someone sometimes team oscar also faces this kind of issue so we know and i want to know that what was your incident so if you will like to share the incident with us if you feel minimum cr- minimum credit you said oh oh yeah no it's okay so this one i mean this one was um so there so i do you know i do i'm i'm electrical engineer too right so i um that is my education 
and my degrees in electrical engineering. So I actually do some, um, um, I work with some companies that do like products for solar power and portable power solutions, right? I don't really work with them. It's more like consulting. There are some guys who kept asking me questions about YouTube videos, you know, for their own YouTube videos. And um, I said, well, you know, just, um, just say that, um, that you got it, that where you got it from, right? Like say um, that Ria supplied the information to you. Uh, they did that once and then they kept asking questions. I answered again and then they didn't do it again. They did not give me the credit the second time. So I stopped answering and then they went and removed the credit. I found that to be a very petty move on their part, meaning that they were, you know, they were being very, very um, vindictive toward me, even though I helped them so much. So, but you know what? I just, I just um, said my piece about that once and I'm just not going to, to do anything about that. Again, people know me and people know how I help them do things. So that's the most important thing for me. Incidents like this need to be dealt accordingly. People have become yeah. quite ungrateful, forgetting the one who helped them when they were in need. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I always like to help people. At the same time, you know, it's not that I'm looking for recognition. Is, um, you know, but it's nice for people to, to know that, you know, that I help them, you know? Yes, yes. I'm not looking for my name in the stars, you know? I'm just looking for people to yes, the know that I help them. You. Yes, a thank you. Exactly. It's it manners. Good. You know? At the end of the day, I realized that, okay, fine. I did a good job. I did something for someone else. Yes, which is why I always, you know, when I see interesting video from you guys, I put it, I put a mention to the video because I know it's helpful to people. Yes. Cheering each other. That's right. <laughs> I, I learned some things from you guys too, by the way. We learned many things from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and to Ajay, through your bio, we get to know that you worked when the World Trade Center was attacked. And I'm yes. very much interested to know that how the ham community helped states at that time. So, if you please <clears throat> share the or share your experience with us as this incident took place before my birth. Sure. Um, so, the World Trade Center disaster was where we had um, terrorist attack from um, you know some groups that used airplanes to, in the buildings. And then we had three places where those attacks took place. One of them was the World Trade Center in New York City. The other one was the Pentagon in Washington, DC. And the third one, the third one was the aircraft that crashed in um, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, right? At some place named Shanksville, Pennsylvania. So um, I was in New York City. I'd been in New York City for less than a year at that time. And um, I was in ham radio. We got called up to do, because what happened is um, the phones stopped working for a lot of reasons. One of them was that a lot of the telephones were out in the World Trade Center, right? The World Trade Center had a lot of telephone equipment from I guess the phone company is Verizon, Bell Atlantic Verizon. They they lost a lot of equipment. And um, we went to the Red Cross shelters to do communications because you couldn't really use your phone. A lot of phones wouldn't work. So we provided information about shelter logistics and such like that. And um, I was there for a good while. I did like four shelters. And then I also did um, duties from home doing a net control because, you know, everything is in a net, a network, right? And provided information that way. And that was interesting. So other people also helped with that. Some people also helped with shelters in other parts of the country where people were stranded because all their flights, because the, the United States took the unprecedented step of grounding every single airplane in the sky, okay, over the United States. They told them, come on, folks, it's time to land, and you're not taking off. <laughs> so a lot of people were, were stranded, okay, and you had to take care of them too. So we had, 
you know, we had people helping them communicate um, uh, health and welfare messages back to their families and all this kind of stuff. So really interesting. It's great. Proud to be in a hobby that can actually save people's life. Right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Ham radio does save lives. But like I tell people, it has to be a fun hobby. Otherwise, you know, people will not be encouraged to do it. That's true. Yes. If you tell them it's it's all serious and no fun, people will not do it. But if you tell them it's fun no, and, it's fun and social education. Right. And and you could have fun helping people. Yes. Um, it's good too. You know, if we say it's fun and you can help always people. good to help people. Right. Yep. Uh, I have already asked many questions, but it's still not over. I again have some okay. questions, but this time it's about ARRL. Sure. So according to my research, ARRL has already completed its 100 years in 2014. And India has also completed its 100 years of licensed amateur radio practice in 2021. So my question or interest is to know about ARRL and it's all mm -hmm. about how ARRL works. Because as from my experience, I'm from the VU land, the land having right. the prefix um, VU, Victor Uniform. Uh, mm -hmm. So if anyone asks about the National Amateur Radio Society of India, people don't know. I also didn't knew back then. Maybe it's just lack of promotion or maybe it can be just lack of many things. I don't have much knowledge, but not only me, to anyone you ask, whether they know or not, but they surely have idea about the ARR. There is also another body, uh, GBRS, Great Britain Radio Society. But RSGB, even, yes. Yes, yes. But even talking about India, ARR mm -hmm. is much more popular. And according to my research, ARRL is popular throughout the world. So how ARRL managed its journey from 1914 to 2022? How can they regularly manage? And what are the events they conduct for which they are so popular? And uh, what ideas or path does the ARRL follow? So the AWRL actually... Um... First of all, the AWRL is its members, right? We we are our membership. We have about 160,000 members and we That's are, amazing. yes, we, we would be nothing without our members, right? And we, there are a number of reasons that AWRL has been so popular throughout the years. Number one is that we have always provided some value to the amateur community, whether it's a QST magazine whether it's the services we provide, whether it's our awards and contest programs, whether it's amateur radio emergency service, we've always provided this value for members and the general amateur community. Number two is that we've been around a long time. In 1914, Hiram Percy Maxim founded the AWRL along with Clarence Tusca, and it started off small because it started off as a radio relay league where they would use the past messages from one area to the next. Okay. And, you know, we've been going out throughout the years. I think the most of it though, is that we publish so many things that radio amateurs find useful books, magazines, and now videos. So we're doing a lot of things in that area. I think for, um, for amateur societies to succeed, they have to provide some value. And it's not that the societies in other countries don't provide value, is that a lot of people don't see the value. You know, so we have to continue to have them tell people, you know, and make and provide real benefit for people. Um, so it's all about teamwork and love for right. the hobby. Nothing else. Teamwork and Correct. love for the hobby. Truly, you guys are doing a great job. So a big right. thanks to all the ARRL members on the behalf of Team Oscar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So is ARRL up for any new event? Is there a new event around the corner? Any new events? Um, so we're always looking for events uh, that um, we are going to do, um, you know, probably on the air events, 
you're talking about, right? We had the national parks on the air in 2014. We have, um, we're always looking for new events, you know. We have some things we're working on right now to get people engaged, but we don't have anything solid yet in terms of what new events we have. We do go to the ham conventions. We go to uh, Dayton Ham Convention and the bigger ham fest around the United States. We also go to the international ones like Friedrichshafen in Germany and also Tokyo Ham Fair in Japan. So that's interesting. I want to go to those someday, probably not with the ARL, but, you know, just in general. And, you know, there's some in India too that, well, we don't go to the ones in India because I don't think we're really some that. Um, some, some yeah, some. but I definitely want to go to one of the ones in India as part of a bigger trip in India to, you know, to, to see my motherland, so to speak. You know? uh, it's a great country. You will come and fall in love. Yes. It's incredible. So, okay. yes. So, Entraj, according to you, what should be the ideal role of an amateur? As we know, there is a difference between amateur and paper amateur. Promotion for a hobby does matter. Promotion for amateur radio does matter because if we cannot attract the youth of today, we have to. The youth will make it work out. So, So if one is only doing promotion for the benefit of other hands, is the person legible? So, yeah. Um, right. So what should we be doing? Right. You said to promote this hobby. That's, that's, that's it, right? Yes. Okay. So I think first of all, um, you know, you need to be, you need to get out there and do things, right? What you guys are doing with the videos is good. I really like that. You have to be visible. You have to be, you know, people have to see you. Believe it or not, I, where I work, we don't have, you know, a, so I don't work full-time for the AWRL. I have a, a, another job that I do. Uh, we have, um, like, we work, I work in technology, and I actually have a lot of colleagues in India, in Pune, and um, Chennai as well too so they are a lot of people they don't know about amateur radio but you know I have an antenna on my vehicle and people ask about the antenna and I say well, that's for ham radio I use that to talk to people I use that as well to send messages because I use the APRS too so that's one thing two you know not only talk to regular people but if you have local organizations like here we have a few things. We have the, the CERT teams, which are community emergency response teams. They basically help local communities prepare for natural and other disasters. So you want to definitely be close to them, involved with them. Um, you definitely want to make sure that they know that amateur radio is available and that how you can teach them you know, offer to teach people, right? I think that that's a very important thing. We need to, to offer to teach people amateur radio and not just, you know, people who are already hams, but you're looking at people who might not have otherwise gotten into ham radio, right? You know, people who did not know that ham radio was for them because, you know, ham radio is not for everybody, okay? I always say this, but there are a lot of people who ham radio is a good fit for that this, they just don't know, you know, they just don't know. And, um, you know, that's, that's a few of the things. Other things I could say is, um, you know, look at schools, try to get people, like I mentioned the example about the teachers, the teachers have their audience in front of them, they have their students, right? And the students, they listen to the teachers, at least they're supposed to listen to the teachers, you know, and they will be very good to get into amateur radio because a lot of them will find this activity fun, educational, and also a, an ability to do public service for the community, you know? But um, there's a lot of things going on in STEM, you know, STEM science, um, technology, and engineering and math that people need, you know, they're involved in. 
And they don't know that amateur radio is a big part of that. So, you know, you have to raise awareness. What I do is I try to get involved with a lot of different groups. I try to, you know, to at least, I don't, I'm not members of these groups, but I will give talks to them on behalf of the AWRL and otherwise, you know, sometimes I might go in a local community and, and do that. We had like, um, we had an amateur radio demonstration on a street festival, right? We had a, um, they close off the streets and they put like people with food and, you know, um, festival and crafts and such like that. And we set up an amateur radio tent and we had you know people come there and I had my, we had radios and we let people talk to people. That's very interesting. So lots of ways you can do it. So Team Oscar, along with the help of the Smart Future Foundation, also holds seminar for this type of activities at schools. Uh -huh. Yeah, to raise the awareness among the school students. Right. Yeah, the very young frontline of the generations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your question is how to be a real amateur, not a paper amateur, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> What I <laughs> I love that slogan, right? Because you can be a paper amateur with just yes, a piece of paper. Convener, convener of Oscar, Neil Chatterjee. Yeah, you have your license and piece of paper. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't stop there. No, you have to pick up that microphone. Okay, you have to get on the air. Okay, not if you know microphone, Morse code, key, computer, whatever. You know, doing the the digital modes, but get on the air. OK, because I tell you, if you do not use the frequencies, the government and all of these um, uh, telecommunication companies will say these hobbyists are not using these frequencies. We can make better use of it. OK. People One of the have motives. Yes, yes, yes. You know, but you definitely need to use the frequencies and definitely. And those who are in the hobby already, what I tell you is make sure that you at least try to look into doing something different every year. Okay. So every year look at different amateur activities and see if you could try something new, you know, like years, like a few years, I tried DMR radios. I tried also APRS, right. I tried, well, back in the days I tried, you know, HF contest DXing. I did some emergency communications. I did, you know, a lot of different things. So I was trying different things. I always try to mix it up, you know. This year, I want to do parks on the air. So I have my portable radios. I could go out to the parks and set up and operate. And that's I will huge. keep them in mind. Yes. Okay, so I see I've taken up most of your time. So the last thing which I want to ask you is that if you get surrounded by loads of work, how can you still keep the spirit of the hobby? Please give some advice to me. So I tell people, you know, I mean, you're in, you have your exams and school and everything. Um, you know, that is your first priority always to do that. But what I tell people is that, yeah, you know, it's okay to take a break from it from time to time to do life things, to do things in your life. But, you know, um, when you need, amateur radio, it is there. And what I tell people is if you are taking a break long-term, like for example, somebody, I know people who take a break to like, they had children and they're raising their families, you know, um, and they didn't have time to devote full-time to amateur radio. That's okay. At least keep the license. Okay. Renew the license and, you know, make sure that, you know, it's there because who knows in the future, it'll be easier. Okay to get back in, but you know, you can always make time for amateur radio, even if it's just um, watching a video or two about amateur radio on YouTube, or you can, um, you know, just try uh, like make a contact on the air with a handheld radio, or you make the contact on HF if you have that, you know, so always ways to keep active, you know, and once you keep active, you keep in it and you don't really lose the interest. I will keep them in mind. Yes. I hope you, I wish you a very long lifetime in amateur radio. Thanks. And then Thanks. maybe one day you will be in this chair talking to a young um, <laughs> lady in amateur radio, telling her your experience. Yes. Again, pray for me. 
I hope it mm, will work will. someday in the future for sure. Yes. It was very nice to talk to you. I am boosted with a new kind of energy, and I will provide the link of your channel in our description box. Guys, do watch our videos because you are gonna learn a bunch of new and interesting things. Thank you, Antwar J, for taking out some time from your busy schedule because I understand how busy you are. It means a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I always, you know, I'm always glad to to um, talk to people about amateur radio. We are and honored. I wish you all, Team Oscar I is honored you all the best. to talk with you. Thank you. And I wish you all the best. And thank of you. course, the entire Team Oscar. I know um, Sir Nil is um, doing a lot of, um, you know, good things in amateur radio. And I hope He's you continue. He's our mentor. Well. The one who inspires good. us every moment. Good, good, good. Okay. So that's it for today. If you are new in the channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated. Don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. Also like and comment. Thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy. Wear a mask, use sanitizer. Peace and 73s.